morning, Liberty. Welcome. It's great to see you. We're going to start off our service with a couple worship songs. So please stand with me, and we're going to begin with a song called Glorious Day. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn till I met you. I was breathing but not alive. All my failures I tried. Till I met you, you called my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious name, you called my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness into your glorious day. Now your mercy has saved my soul. Now your freedom is all that I know. The old When I met you, you called my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious day. You called my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness. Into your glorious day. I needed a rescue, my sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open. Cause when you call my name, and I ran out of that gate, out of the darkness, into your glorious day. You called my and I ran out of that bed, out of the darkness, into your glorious day. Moving in our midst, I worship. 
worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. Touching every heart, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. seated. Let's bow our hearts and minds in prayer. 
Heavenly Father, your word says, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. And Lord, your word also says that uh, your steadfast love and your mercy and your faithfulness endures forever. So Lord, those are two anchors that we latch on to during uncertain times. The anchor that you are the God of the universe. You are the God that had no beginning, no end. And that you promise to be faithful, merciful, and loving towards us. And Lord, we just uh, hang on to those two anchors. And Lord, we trust in you. Uh, as that song says, even, even when I don't feel that you're answering my prayer, you don't feel like you're present, feel like you're distant somewhere. Lord, we hang on to those two anchors that says, no, that's not true. Even though you appear silent, you are near to us. And you're teaching us and directing us and loving us during the whole time. And so, Father, I pray that we would just continue to trust in you because you are worthy to be praised and you are certainly worthy to be trusted. And so we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning to you. Good to see a whole bunch of you here. I'm Dane Schout, the senior pastor here at Liberty Free, and we'd like to welcome you, especially those of you who are guests. We've got a lot of guests here for our child dedication, and uh, uh, it's just a thrill to, to see uh, many of you. In uh, Psalm chapter 127, verses 1 through 3, we see some really solid truths about children. And in Psalm 127, it says, Unless the Lord builds a house, its builders will labor in vain trying to build it. Unless the Lord watches over a city, those who watch over the city will stay alert in vain. It is vain for you to get up early and stay up late, purely working hard to have enough food, because it is the Lord that gives sleep to the ones he loves. And then in verse 3, Behold, children are a gift from the Lord. Children are a gift from the Lord. And so I think this passage says two things in reverse order. Children are a gift from the Lord. That word gift is actually a financial term. That word gift means your children are on loan to you from God. They are a gift from God to you. And so it's a lot like our finances. We can say, no, it's mine. And the Lord says, no, it isn't. And we can basically have this attitude, hey, these are my children. I'll do whatever I want to with them. And God's word would say, no, they have been given to you by the Lord. And basically, then the second challenge is, so how are you building your family? How are you building your house? Are you building it on your own wisdom? Your own instincts, your own feelings, your own gut level? Are you building it upon what the, the Word of God says, what the Lord says to you? Because basically it says, you try to build that foundation on anything else but the Lord, and it's just going to crumble after a period of time. And so we have this wonderful passage that says, these children are gifts from the Lord given to you, not to raise them in any old way you want to, but to raise them in God's hope that Christ would be the foundation in that family. And so when parents come up, as they are going to do today, uh, to dedicate their children, basically what they're doing is two things. Number one, they're acknowledging that their children are gifts from the Lord. And then the second thing is, is they are going to publicly before you, the witnesses, they're going to basically express their desire. It'll never be done perfectly. We're imperfect people. But they will express their desire. Hey, these children are gifts. We recognize it. We recognize also that Christ needs to be a foundation. And so we are going to publicly, in front of these witnesses, say, yes, we desire to raise our kids in a Christ-like way. We're going to try to do our best by God's grace to keep Christ's center in our home. And we want to publicly acknowledge that uh, on Sunday morning in front of other fo followers of Christ. Because as brothers and sisters, 
we are actually their spiritual family. And so we also have an obligation, which I'm going to uh, have you uh, agree to uh, later on. But uh, so basically, dedication of a child is I'm coming up here as a Christ follower and expressing my desire to raise this child, these children, according to God's word, according to God's desires, with Christ as our foundation. What this is not, you can't find this anywhere in Scripture. This is not some sort of bestowal, bestowal of salvation upon the child. God's word, and I'm going to really expand on it during my message as we look at 1 John. But basically, God's word is very clear. Every single person must come to a point in their life where they acknowledge who Jesus is and what he has done, and they must choose to either accept that or reject that as an individual. And so our prayer certainly is that these children will come to a point in their life where, where they acknowledge Jesus as their Savior, desire to serve him and love him and worship him, and they give their hearts and their minds and their lives to Christ. That would be certainly our desire, and that's going to be our prayer. But there is no sort of special bestowal of salvation when I say a prayer of blessing over them. So this is extremely, extremely meaningful. But it does not bestow salvation upon the child. And we are just privileged today to have three different uh, uh, parents who have decided to dedicate a child to the Lord. And I'm going to ask them to come on up at this time and uh, ask them to come. We'll sort of spread around the stage a little bit. Isn't this impressive? There's a lot of gifts up here. All right. Since there's so many, I'm going to ask uh, one of the parents to just sort of introduce themselves. And then um, hopefully they'll remember who their children are. Because if it was me, I would call one of them a different name and another one would say a different name. So, But uh, this uh, prevents me from having to do it. So... Kevin Jones, my wife Michelle, our oldest son is Riker, and Finn, Beckett, Nell, and the new addition, Amos. I'm Bruce, this is my wife Candy, this is uh, Calvin, um, Zach, Brittany, Ryan, and you got Ethan over there, Gina, Trevor, Lizzie. And Emma. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Nick. Uh, this is my wife, Kelsey. We have Shay, Case, McCabe, and then this is Monroe. All right. Thank you so much. I'm just going to begin on one side. And uh, uh, once again, what is dedication? It's parents who proclaim that they're followers of Christ desiring to raise their children in a Christ-like way. And so I'm going to ask each parent, a set of parents, a question, and then we will uh, dedicate the child to the Lord. Nick and Kelsey, I'm going to ask you these questions. Do you publicly proclaim before these witnesses that you do indeed proclaim Jesus Christ as your only Lord and only Savior? If so, say we do. Nick and Kelsey is the parents of Monroe. Do you solemnly vow before God and these witnesses that you will, with God's help and grace, raise Monroe in a Christ-like manner? If this is your desire, say, we will. And last question, Nick and Kelsey, do you commit to modeling a life of obedience, love, and devotion to Christ in front of your children, raising them with God's grace 
according to the teachings of God's holy word. If this is your desire, say, we do. Do you have a scripture, Pastor? Just a moment, please. I asked each uh, parent to uh, sort of come up with a scripture passage that would be significant for this time. Colossians 3.12, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Amen. Now, typically, this is my favorite part of dedication when I get to hold the child, but uh, due to our time, um, I'm not going to do that, but uh, we'll certainly uh, touch the child. What is the full name of the child? Okay. Monroe, Etta Jane Mulder, I now dedicate you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we dedicate this child to your love, to your grace, to your mercy. And Lord, we just pray that this would be a child that grows up to be a wonderful woman of God. And Lord, we just really pray that your spirit would watch over this family. Lord, that you would give them wisdom and strength because parenting these days is a very difficult task. And so, Lord, we bestow this blessing upon this child and this whole family, and we do this in Jesus' name. Amen. Bruce and Candy, I'm going to ask you the, the uh, same questions. Do you publicly proclaim Jesus Christ as your only Lord and Savior? If so, say, we do. Bruce and Candy, as the parents of Emma, do you solemnly vow before God and before these witnesses that you will, with God's help and with God's grace, raise her in a Christ-like manner? If this is your desire, say, we will. And Bruce and Candy, do you commit to modeling a life of obedience, a life of love, a life of devotion to Christ in front of Emma and the rest of your family, raising her up in accordance to the teachings of God's holy word? If this is your desire, say, we do. Amen. Do you have a scripture passage? Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the full name of this precious gift? Emma Lou Van Donsky. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we dedicate Emma Lou Van Donsler to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray for her. We commit you, uh, to her to your grace, to your love, to your mercy, to your faithfulness. And Lord, we just pray that this entire family would be led by your Spirit, that you would give them strength and wisdom during these difficult times of parenting. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Kevin, Michelle, I'll ask you the same questions as well. Kevin and Michelle, do you publicly, before these witnesses, proclaim Jesus Christ as your only Lord and only Savior? If so, say we do. As the parents of Amos, do you solemnly vow before God and these witnesses that you will, with God's help and with God's grace, Raise him in a Christ-like manner. If this is your desire, say we will. Kevin and Michelle, do you commit to modeling a life of obedience, a life of love, a life of devotion to Christ in front of Amos, raising him up according to the teachings of God's word? If this is your desire, say we do. Amen. Do you have a passage of scripture? Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. Amen. Great promises there. The name of your child? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we commit and dedicate Amos Ray Jones to the Lord. And Heavenly Father, we commit him to you, and we pray that uh, you would just watch over him, Lord, that you would uh, extend your mercy and love and grace and kindness to him. Lord, what a precious gift this is, what a precious gift all these children are. And Father, we just pray that you give Kevin and Michelle a tremendous amount of wisdom, 
and guidance and strength uh, during these times. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to ask you, brothers and sisters in Christ, who attend Liberty, which means you're a part of this church family, I'm going to ask you to stand at this time. And I'm going to ask you some pointed questions because as brothers and sisters of Christ, we have an obligation to each family here as well. Do you, the attendees of Liberty Evangelical Free Church, promise to support these parents in their desire to raise their children in a Christ-like way? Do you promise to encourage them by praying for them? Will you encourage them through your words, through your friendship? Will you encourage them to remain faithful to the commitment that they have just verbally made before you, the witnesses. If you so desire, please respond by saying, we will. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Let's give them a big hand and uh, thank them for their... We're going to go into an attitude of prayer. One of the things that we do here at Liberty is uh, each week we have one of our elders that comes up and just sort of uh, uh, praise about things, both uh, that are local, um, pertinent to our local church family, but also things uh, broader than that as well. So I'm going to ask one of our elders, Kevin um, DeRoos, to uh, lead us in prayer. Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, the things that I was going to talk about this morning, um, just watching all you families up here, Mulders, Jones, and Vendonslers, you truly have been blessed by God, each one of you families. Isn't it exciting to be in a church that believes that children are special? This is the future of the church, folks. These little children, each one of us as members of this church body, we need to spend time praying for each other. Um, We've got a church directory. The elders go through that on a regular basis, pray for special families, certain families that they're responsible for. But each one of you as members of this church body, I would encourage you to go through the directory that we have. Spend time praying for each family, especially these folks this week that have dedicated children. They could be pastors, elders, deacons, deaconesses, janitors, musicians up here. Maybe somebody run an AV back there. Maybe it'll be the next Billy Graham. We don't know, but we need to pray. Um, I don't know if you got a chance to look at the email that Pastor Dane sent out this past week. Last Sunday, he talked about all the things, all the attributes, who we are in Christ, our identity in Christ. One of those in the middle talked about we are to be a light to the world. Philippians 2.15 says, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked gener generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. I pray that we here at Liberty would be known as shining stars for Jesus Christ. We do want to spend time praying now as a church family. A um, couple of things real quick. R.J. Balch had hip replacement surgery this past week, and Sam Minder's father has COVID, and he's in the nursing home. So let's go to our Heavenly Father now and pray for these and other things. Father, we, we thank you for this time that we can come this morning to worship you. God, you are the way maker. You're the promise keeper. You're the light in the darkness. Help us to know who we are in Christ so that we can shine like stars in the darkness that's around us. Father, we lift up each one of these three families this morning. We just pray that these children would come to know Jesus at an early age. We pray that they would stand strong in their faith and that they would be a bold witness for you in this world, wherever they may end up someday. Help them to shine like stars for you. Father, we do want to pray for uh, some folks that have had medical things this past week. We pray for RJ as he had the hip replacement surgery. 
Uh, we pray for healing. We pray that the recovery would go well, physical therapy would go well, and that he'd be able to walk better than he has in the past. We do lift up uh, Sam Minder's father with uh, the COVID right now. Uh, I know there's a lot of folks in nursing homes here in Marion County that have come down with this, and we just pray for healing. Father, we thank you that in our, in our church family here that this has not been a big problem. We know some places around the state and the country it is, and we don't take this for granted. We thank you for your protection, God, because we know it's only by your grace that we are as healthy as we are. And we ask for your continued blessing on our church family. Father, we're also very thankful for the rain that you sent this past week. I know at my own home, I measured seven inches. We just thank you for how this restores the earth, makes the air clean and fresh, makes things green and grow. Father, I want to lift up our high school youth as they begin youth group tonight. We pray for the leaders, pray for Pastor Rob as he uh, leads our youth ministries here at this church. We also want to pray for the middle school youth group in Awana as they begin this coming Wednesday and Sunday school next week. Father, what a wonderful opportunity for kids to hear the gospel in a more uh, personalized way. We pray that you would guide not only Pastor Rob, but each one of the uh, sponsors, the leaders in those groups. Give them words of wisdom that they can ha have the right thing to say at the right time to help lead folks to Christ. Also want to pray for the women's retreat coming up this coming weekend at Hidden Acres. Lord, that's always a good time uh, of refreshment for anybody who goes there, whether young or older. And uh, we pray for safe travel. We pray that nobody would get sick during this time and that the ladies that are there would uh, hear from your word and would be encouraged. Father, I also pray for uh, leadership here at the church, Pastor Dane, Pastor Rob, elders, deacons, deaconesses. As uh, we begin to look at things for the budget for next year, we need your guidance, Father. Help us to make good decisions with your money. And I also pray that you would help each of us in this church to nominate godly individuals for elder, deacon, and deaconess. Because, Lord, we want this church to be run by you. We pray that your spirit would guide us in everything that we do and that you alone would receive all the honor and glory. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand. We're going to sing a couple of songs and then dig into God's word. To trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the saith the Lord. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, just in sin, for faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing blood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Yes, tis sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease, just from Jesus 
Dip your heart in the stream of a life Let the pain and the sorrow be washed up If your heart in the stream of life, let the pain and the sorrow be washed away in the waves of his mercy as the deep cries out to
Thank you. If you brought your Bibles, go ahead uh, in your Bible or Bible app or on your phone. Turn to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. We're going to be landing there a second. A uh, couple of quick announcements. Uh, high school youth, uh, you had a great dime at Slideways last Sunday. You're going to be back to your regular uh, order right now. So um, high school youth, 6 o'clock tonight. 6 o'clock tonight right here. Uh, we started Awana and Middle School and Club 56 on Wednesday. There was a great group here. Um, always come here by 6.30, and uh, those three different age groups go as well. Um, ladies, if you're going to the women's retreat, you may have signed up on the uh, uh, website, but if you plan on going and you signed up and you haven't signed your name on the sheet, please sign that at the end of the service, uh, basically for transportation. We don't want everybody, anybody to have to travel uh, by themselves and uh, all church picnic today 95% of the time it's 95 degrees we have a perfect perfect day for it so uh, we're going to uh, dismiss at 1130 we're going to regather at Caldwell Park and we're going to have our uh, all church picnic uh, that's been delayed by a few months um, so uh, we're just happy to do that so you're certainly invited you say well I didn't fix something I'll bet you there, are, knowing, the, knowing the men and women at this church, I'll bet you there'll be plenty of food for you, all right? So just to tack that up. I'm going to do something a little bit different today, actually really different. Um, I'm going to read you a children's story to start off. Um, within the last month, unfortunately, the ones that were dedicated today weren't a part of this, but uh, this past month I bought a whole bunch of these books and we started. Uh, this is one of the gifts that Liberty Free gives to any parent uh, who has a uh, new child. So we've been given one away so far, and our, our plan is to do this. But um, uh, Don and I, both education majors, realized the importance of reading to your kids. When they were six months old, started reading to them. Before their nap, before they went to bed, throughout the day, just read them books. And one of the things that we always tried to do was we read them a lot of different kinds of books, but one of the kinds of books we always wanted to read were those books that were Christ-centered. And uh, so this is uh, one of the books. So uh, I'm going to sort of take on Mr. Rogers' role. I'm not going to put a sweater on. I'm not going to change my shoes, and I'm not going to sing Welcome to the Neighborhood, but uh, I'm going to read a book. So uh, parents, if you have young kids, each page is going to be on the screen. So you can sort of direct them to the screen right now and say, Pastor Dane is going to read you a story. So take a look at the screen. Adults, don't zone out because I'm going to challenge you when I'm done with this book. All right? It is called, Wherever You Go, I Want You to Know. And here's how it goes. Listen, little one, I want you to know. I have a big dream wherever you go. There's so much to do and so much to see. It's fun just to wonder about all you could be. Perhaps you'll fly planes that go whoosh right up high. Or maybe raise crops that grow tall to the sky. You could be a chef, chef and make meals for a king. Or maybe on stage you'll perform as you sing. But whatever you do, wherever you go, I have a big dream that I want you to know. Perhaps you'll build houses with stone upon stone or help as a doctor and fix broken bones. You could be a teacher and read every day or maybe an artist who sculpts out of clay. If you sing or you cook, if you farm or you teach or you fly, if you know all about all the stars in the sky, Whatever you do, wherever you go, I have a big dream that I want you to know. The world's a big place, full of good things and bad. Adventures await you, some happy, some sad. 
Sometimes you'll lose and come in last place. Sometimes you'll win with a smile on your face. You may fall in love or fall out of a plane. Enjoy sunny skies or dance in the rain. If you go far away or stay close to home, if we chat face to face or talk on the phone, whatever you do, wherever you go, I have a big dream that I want you to know. It's something exciting. It's something supreme. It's my greatest of hopes, my dream of all dreams. I pray that you love Jesus with all of your heart. Whatever you do, that's the right place to start. He made you. He loves you. He's good, kind, and true. Jesus brings joy in whatever you do. He died for your sin. He makes all things new. You can trust in his words. They're all faithful and true. Walk with him. Talk with him day after day. Follow King Jesus. He's the life, the truth, and the way. I love you so much. I deeply want you to know I'm cheering you on wherever you go. And whatever you do, wherever you start, my prayer is you love Jesus with all of your heart. In 1 John chapter 5, John's getting ready to end his letter of 1 John. And he basically does a whatever you do, wherever you are statement. And it's at the end of the passage we're going to look at, but it's 1 John 5, verse 11, 12, and 13. It's sort of a wherever you go, whatever you do, wherever you are, this is critical. And so here's what he says. This is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. The one who has the Son has life. The one who does not have the Son of God does not have life. I have written these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Okay, we're going we're gonna to switch from a children's book and we're going to go to a courtroom because basically in verses um, 6 through 13 of 1 John 5, that's what John is doing. He's taking us to a holy courtroom and he's bringing up uh, witnesses to testify the truth about this Jesus and eternal life. And so basically, we move from a children's story to a courtroom. Uh, in, in verses 6 through 13 of 1 John 5, the word testimony or testified or testifies all comes from the same original root, appears eight times. And that word in the original, to testify or testifies or testified, basically means to come as a witness, but it meant something even deeper at this time. It's, I'm coming as a witness, and I absolutely promise I will tell the truth. And so these are witnesses who aren't going to try to fool you. These are witnesses who know the truth and will tell you the truth about Jesus, what is Christianity all about? And so we bring up four key witnesses. And the first one, and second one, and third one, it's just a little hard to comprehend, but I'll explain. It happens in verses 6 through 8. And in verse 6 it says, Jesus Christ, he is the one who came by water and blood. Not by water only, but by water and by blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three are all in agreement with each other. And so the first uh, witness that John brings up, he calls the water. He uses it four times in verses 6 through 8. What is he referring to? He's referring to the baptism of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, 17, it says, After Jesus was baptized, he went up immediately from the water and the heavens suddenly opened up for him and he saw the spirit of God descending on him like a dove and coming down on him and there came a voice from heaven that declared this is my beloved son 
I take delight in him. And so that's the first witness. The first witness is John saying, hey, that was a time when God declared who this Jesus is. He is my son. And also water would also represent the, the entirety of Jesus' life. That Jesus lived a perfect life. He lived a sinless life, the scriptures say. And so therefore he was able to be uh, our representative and die for our sins. And that brings up number two. The next witness brought to the stand is called blood. He is the one who came by water and blood. Not by water only, but by water and blood. So at the end of his life, this is referring to his crucifixion. Christ went to the cross, shed his blood as our substitute so that we don't have to experience eternal punishment for our sins because Christ took on our sins. He became sin, who knew no sin, so that we could experience forgiveness with a holy God. I like what some person writes. When Jesus Christ died on the cross as an atoning sacrifice for the sins of the world, his father again provided significant witnesses concerning an event. There was darkness across the land from noon until three o'clock. The curtain of the sanctuary was split in two from top to bottom. There was an earthquake. A number of Old Testament saints were raised and appeared to many as the first fruits of the resurrection. These events led to a hardened Roman centurion soldier saying, this man truly is the son of God. Jesus of Nazareth was not simply a special person sent by God, a, a prophet or a wise teacher. No, instead, he was the one who was our substitute at the cross. He is the eternal son of God who entered this world in time and in space and died as our propitiation. And then the third witness brought up is the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, do you swear to tell the truth? Nothing but the truth? Well, it says right here, the end of verse 6, the Spirit is the truth. The Spirit knows nothing but truth. And so the Holy Spirit would say, yes, I testify that this Jesus is the Son of God, God's unique and only individual who was capable to go to the cross, pay the penalty for our sin. <laughs> Some pretty impressive witnesses. But he saves the best for last. God the Father. Verses 9 through 10. If we accept human testimony, God's testimony is even greater. Because it is God's testimony that he has given about his son. Whoever believes in the son of God has this testimony within himself. Whoever does not believe God has made God to become a liar. Because he has not believed in the testimony that God himself has given about his son. Heavenly Father, do you recognize this man named Jesus? Yes, he is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Do you testify that he and only he alone is your son and the, the only way of salvation? Heavenly Father, yes, from the very beginning, even before I created Adam and Eve and before they sinned, causing all of humanity to be plunged into sin, I had a plan. And my plan was that Jesus, my son, my only begotten, to come to earth and to pay that penalty. I foretold his coming through many different prophets. I sent John the Baptist as his forerunner. I sent an angel to Mary to announce to her that she was my choice to be the human mother of my son, Jesus. And though Jesus existed one with me throughout eternity as the third person of the Trinity, he became man. The night of his birth, my angel sang about it. I sent shepherds to witness it. Wise men came to observe it and pay homage to him. 
As a man, Jesus entered his ministry and he was baptized, as I have already testified. The heavens opened and I spoke, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. The night before his crucifixion, he called out to me, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass. But not my will, but yours be done. I did this for a purpose. And my son did it willingly. This purpose was to make atonement for sins because it was the only way for forgiveness to occur. My son Jesus was crucified and buried, and three days later, the Spirit raised him from the dead. Forty days later, he ascended to heaven, where today he sits at my right hand. One day I will determine the time has come, and my son will come again to this earth, and I give eternal life as a gift, and this eternal life comes only through this son of mine, Jesus. So John has brought these witnesses forward, but what's the court case about in the first place? What is it about? Well, the court case is to determine how can I be saved? How can salvation come to me? How can I experience forgiveness of my sins? And what John has been doing throughout his letter, and he does as he's getting ready to close his letter, is he is saying there is only he refers to Jesus as the one and only previous. And basically, what John is trying to do is to authenticate and validate the absolute truthfulness of his claim in verses 11 and 20. This is a testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. The one who has the Son has life. The one who does not have Son of God does not have life. So John is trying to have this court case to try to convince us that there is only one way. Uh, last week I, I mentioned that we live in a hypertense culture. They're hypertense, they're hyper relativistic, and they're hyper angry if you don't agree with them. John would not be very popular in our culture. Because what he is doing in this section is he's saying, once again, because he's done it several times through 1 John, we've seen that. Once again, he's putting the state down, and he's saying this Jesus is unique, and he is the only one. And it's only through him that you can experience the forgiveness of your sins before a holy God. But what I appreciate, John, is this. John, at least you're telling the truth. At least you're letting us know what Christianity is and what Christianity isn't. Because we live in this culture that wants to make us believe that Christianity can just be sort of thrown in with everything else. And John's putting the stake down saying, no, no, no. No, no, no. You can believe many different things, but here's the truth about who Jesus is. He's the one and only. And so basically what John is saying is there's only two destinies. He says, this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. The one who has the son has life. The one who does not have the son does not have life. There are only two destinies, John says. There's spiritual life or spiritual death. There's eternal life or eternal death. And what he says is you only have spiritual life through Jesus. And if you don't know Jesus, you're living in spiritual death. There's a physical part of us and there's a spiritual part of us. Our physical body will soon die, but the spiritual part of us is eternal, the scriptures teach. And it's not unconscious. It is eternally aware of everything that's going on. And so what John is trying to say is there's a difference. And those who have spiritual life are only those who have acknowledged the Son, Jesus, for who he is and what he has done. By the way, there's another person in this narrative that I haven't mentioned. It's you. 
You see that word? In one translation, it's, it's translated, the one who has the Son has life, the one who doesn't. Uh, you can also translate that, whoever. Take the whoever out, put in a blank line, and put your name in it. If your name has the Son, then you have life. If, fill in your name, does not have the Son, they do not have life. And so the question that you need to seriously answer is which of those lines would your name go in? Have you come to a point in your life where you acknowledged who this Jesus is for who he truly says he is and who all the witnesses of the scripture say he is, that he was the unique son of God sent to earth for an extremely important mission and that mission was to go to the cross during those three hours of darkness, God's wrath towards sin was poured out upon him so that it didn't have to be poured out upon me. And so that we can have eternal life because of what he has done. But basically, here's the ground rules. You must come to a decision in your own life where you either accept that or reject that. And according to John... If you accept it, you have eternal life. If you reject it, you have eternal death. And so once again, which of these lines would your name show up on? And in verse 13, John just shares his earnestness of how important this is. He says, I've written these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. My prayer would be the same thing, that you don't leave here this morning without knowing Jesus Christ. Because only in knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior do you have eternal life. And that is the testimony of God's Word regarding what is Christianity and what is it not. My prayer is that you give your heart in your mind, in your life, to Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit, you know the hearts and the minds of every single person here more intimately than even they know themselves. And Father, I pray that you would allow them to make an accurate assessment of their hearts and their minds and their lives. And Lord, I would pray that there's anyone here who does not know you personally, truly, that they would simply, by faith, it's a free gift, it says God has given us life, that they would accept the free gift. It's nothing that they can earn. It's a gift that they can receive. And I pray that they would just trust Jesus for who he is, what he has done, and trust him with their life. That they might live for him, that they might serve him, that they might experience life, true eternal life through him. Lord, they can do that right now. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would just draw their hearts to yourself. I pray this in Jesus' name. Let's go ahead and stand, and we're going to sing one more song before we close. This last song is called Holy, and it's a new song for us, but it's been around for a little while. And it creates a lot of really good word pictures talking about how holy Jesus is and how worthy of praise he only is. So once you get it, sing out with us. But we're going to sing this one for the first time this morning called Holy. Could look on your glory. 
be a space shining like the sun. What heart could hold the weight of your love and know the heights of your great worth? What eyes could look on your glorious face shining like the sun? You are holy, 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 God most high and God most worthy. Your name alone has power to raise us. Your light will shine when all else fades. Our eyes will look on your glorious face, shining like the sun.
Just a reminder, those of you who plan on going to the picnic today, uh, we plan on starting at 11.30. If you want to show up at noon, that's fine. It's going to be slim pickings if you do, all right? So, but uh, we have some special guests here. Please congratulate these three families. Uh, also introduce yourself to the families and friends that have come with them. And uh, just uh, do that in a great social distancing kind of way. Um, and do that, but uh, God bless you. So, wherever you are, whatever you do, just remember this. Jesus said, lo, I am with you always until the end of the age. He's always there. May you have that hope wherever you're at and whatever you are doing. God bless you. You're dismissed. Have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday. Thanks for being here.